And at halftime, I'll... We are streaming. Sorry. Start talking. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Founders Field here at Worthington Christian Upper School. The uh, we, we got a football game, believe it or not, given all the stuff going on with the coronavirus pandemic. And it's September 4th, an excellent evening here. Uh, the weather's beautiful. We have great temperatures, really no wind even. Um, so it should make for a good game. I'm David Reed. I'm here with Al Tucker. He's going to be doing some uh, color commentary. Uh, good afternoon, Dave. Thanks for uh, letting me join you next year. And uh, hopefully, you know, and I just realized when they, when we talked about doing this tonight, I, I got braces on this morning. So I'm going to be uh, dealing with a little bit of that. So, yeah, if you hear me uh, stumble or stutter or whatever, but uh, we're, we're just excited to be out here playing on a beautiful night tonight. Looking forward to seeing WC take on the Miller Falcons. Absolutely. So here we have kickoff, 40 seconds on the clock, and we're coming down to it. We got some excellent referees tonight helping us out, and uh, it should be a great game. As we mentioned, excellent weather and a decent turnout for how things are so far at the stadium. So it should make for a fun game here. And um, some of the, <coughs> some of the, one of the interesting things about tonight is for the Warriors, from what I know, <coughs> our quarterbacks are very young. Um, <coughs> we have Hobie Rakes, who's a freshman, who is going to be playing some quarterback a little bit, along with Caden Lasseter. So for the Warriors here, it's going to be an interesting game because they have a lot of young talent here, a, a really developing year. And shallow kickoff, and it looks like it brings them down right about the 30 yard, 39 yard line. And Hobie Rakes is on the field. The Warriors will be in the huddle. Hobie Rakes in shotgun formation. A receiver wide to his right. We'll take the snap and hand it off to the running back. And they'll get tackled for little to no gain. It'll be a second down. Yeah, it's going to be a second and long now. They had good penetration on the defense there. Um, and I know last week when they were playing Grove City Christian, they really wanted to use that run to set up their pass, which is obviously what they're trying here tonight. So let's see if they keep going with that run scheme. The Warriors breaking the huddle with confidence. Hobie in the backfield defense looking to blitz. Hobie throws to his right. They'll catch it. He's going to run with it a little bit. It'll be third down, and looks like he picks up a couple yards there. Jaden Reynolds, number the five, uh, wide receiver on that. Jaden Reynolds, number two. Tackle by number 50, Landon Evans. And the Warrior offense here is in a unique position because Hobie Rakes is a freshman quarterback, but the running back, Braden Anderson, is a senior. So they have they have both sides of the of the coin here, if you will. So very experienced running back, very confident, and the quarterback confident too, but clearly doesn't have that much experience to bring to the game as of now. Yeah, but I know he played uh, did a really good job last year with the um, junior high team playing quarterback, and he's very athletic. So what he's going to have to worry about tonight is you know just not just to be patient, stay patient while he's out there. Two receivers wide. Hobie motions in. He's going to throw a pass right over. They're going to catch out and run with that. Pick up the first down, going all the way down the field. And he's off. Straight to the goal line. I would say that was at least 60-yard run. And as I mentioned there, the Braden Anderson, he scored that touchdown. Senior, lots of experience, and Hobie was able to throw just a great pass to the outside there. Anderson was able to pick that up. He found his opening, just went straight down the field and took it home. That's right. That's what they need to do, just get the ball to the athletes and let them take it from there. So it was a, that was a great catch and run on Braden's part. 
Extra point attempt by number 32, Grant Woodfin. Now, Grant Woodf Woodfin here actually plays for the soccer team as well. So they have a great kicker here, great leg strength, and along with Adam Dunson, who also plays soccer for Worthington Christian. And the extra point is good. Warrior 7, Falcons 0. So very quick score coming right out of the gate here for the Warriors. So the Falcons will hopefully look to pick up some points here and really come out and show some dominance uh, in their offense. That's a, a great way to start things off on your brand new turf. I'm sure we had a lot of jitters here. It's our first home game of the season. Like you said, on this brand new turf that they just got laid down about a week ago. We just got internet in our press box yesterday, so we weren't even sure if we were going to be able to do this tonight. But um, yeah, great way to start the game. Absolutely. Lots of moving components, and uh, we're very grateful for all the people here at WC that are working to make this stuff happen. Uh, and, and especially with the new campus as well, brand new buildings. New tech, new everything. So it's uh, definitely interesting to get things set up and get them going. Once again, Grant Woodfin will take the kickoff here. 10 minutes, 21 seconds on the clock. We'll kick it deep, and the Falcons do pick it up. We'll start running, and we'll dodge some tackles, but it'll be taken down around the 25-ish yard line. Yeah, about to the 25 for a nice little return right there. We thought we had him on about the 15 or 20-yard line, but just need to wrap up a little bit more. But good return. Now let's see what we can do on the defense. Hold these guys. And it looks like the quarterback is number three, Blayton Cox. And the <clears throat> the Falcons, obviously the Warriors have scored very early in the game. So what they want to do right now is just be able to come out and score quickly and be, be able to get some points on the board. So they'll take the snap and they'll immediately run the ball. And Cox will be taken down before he even crosses the line of scrimmage. And it makes sense they're using him as a uh, kind of a running back right now. Almost looks like a scat offense out there with the uh, he Blayton had played running back the last couple of years. Just moved into quarterback this year. I guess he's uh, recovering from an ACL. So glad to see him back out there running again. So I'm not surprised that he is uh, going to be tucking that ball and running with it, just since he has been. The, running back the last couple of years. For sure, I think you're absolutely right. And, um, you know, for the running game, it'll be critical that the Warriors shut down the run and force them to move to the passing game. And they'll run the ball here again. It'll be number 12, Damon That's a number McKee. 32, Caleb Russell. Oh, yes, thank you. And a, a freshman, 5'11 freshman, Caleb Russell. Number 32, Caleb Russell on the carry. Tackled by number 84, Ethan Albert. And number 65. So they got a about a third and one situation here. So see what we uh, see if our defense can hold these guys for this one yard and make them punt. Jet sweep with the ball. Cox will hold it and try to run with it, but he'll end up getting yeah, nowhere. Looks like he's going to be about lost about a yard on that one, so it's going to be fourth and two. So we're going to bring out the punt return team. Tackled by Jeb Burford and Josh Carroll. Warriors defensive coordinator is actually also the the head coach, Coach Jeff Hardings. And Cox will actually take the bunt here as the quarterback. And they'll just let it. Heisel lets it roll on by. Punt by Blayton Cox. 
So the Warriors will take up the ball here right at the 25-yard line. Little room in the backfield to work with. And Rakes should hopefully be able to get some good passes in here. And I'm really looking for Anderson to make some great, great runs here. Uh, clearly he found his opening in the last drive, and I think he'll be able to do that again hopefully here. Hobie will take the snap and immediately run with the ball for almost reaching the first down. We'll see if he gets it. I believe he's just short of the first down. Looks like he's yeah, just short of that first down, but they're, they're using his athleticism. Absolutely. And it was a quick snap and quick run. He showed little hesitation. He took it and went. He saw his opening and just went for it. Right kudos, away. Kudos to that big line up there. They're making some nice holes right now. They had a little bit of jitters there at the beginning, but looks like they've settled down now. Absolutely, and they have a lot of talent on the offensive line. Riggs is going to throw it deep. It'll be incomplete, though. Oh, and he's, he really wanted a interference on that. Yeah, for sure. Looks like the referees, they may be a little bit jittery tonight, too, so... Maybe haven't roughed a game in quite a while, so. Absolutely. We'll give him a little break here in the first quarter. <laughs> <laughs> for, for sure. <laughs> and this, this is only the second game of the season, the first home game for the Warriors. So I'm sure they're excited to play on their home turf and be able to get some experience. Playing in a, a very fresh new environment that will, going forward, help them a lot. Anderson will get the ball here, and he'll just run for it and get up to the 40-yard line, or the 39, to be exact. And the Warriors have shown to be a very dominant team in the offense sector so far. The Falcons have struggled to really stop them so far, and they're doing an excellent job of running the ball, but also keeping their passing lanes open. On the 39-yard line, Rakes takes the snap. He'll keep it, runs straight forward, and pick up about a yard or two. It'll be second down for the Warriors. Rakes carries the ball, tackled by Kylan McLean, number five. I don't know if they're setting up the uh, RPO on that one. He kind of did that fake, fake handoff, hoping to pull those linebackers off to the to the right side, and then he. Ran it right up the middle. Absolutely. And a little jet sweep with Jaden Reynolds running down the side right past Hobie. And they're trying to, you know, confuse the defense and try to get them, get them a little jittery, add to that, you know, nervousness. Six minutes on the clock so far. Rakes will take the snap. He looks to throw to the receiver. And they'll come up with that. Aaron Izalad, a nice, nice catch on that. Got him about five yards Great on that play. To number nine, Aaron Izal is complete. Tackled by number 19, Tommy Mitchell. For a freshman quarterback, Rakes is doing a great job of staying calm, and he's doing an excellent job of on-the-field leadership. Great passes, not doing anything too insane, and just really playing it smooth. So they, they, these guys have clearly put in a lot of time and really practiced a lot to get down that team cohesion. Rakes will take the snap here, hand it off to Anderson. Anderson's going to do his best to just push forward and get picks that his, first down. That's right, picks his way through, kind of took, took advantage of some of the arm tackles out there. Got a nice first down for them. Braden Anderson on the carry, tackled by number 54, Isaiah McCune. We're going to take a timeout here.
Well, it looked like they were going to take a timeout, but the ref was motioning the team back onto the field. They're going to start the clock here. Five minutes left in the quarter. The Falcon defense looks ready to play. Rakes throws for a long pass. Straight to, it looked like Jaden Reynolds. Or excuse me, Breaks Corral. Number six, Corral is complete. Excellent pass there by Rakes. That was a nice, yeah, nice pass and a great way to climb up the ladder and get that for Amsbaugh, the uh, sophomore, 5'11", wide receiver. Great catch. And Anderson's going to get the ball here and just run straight to the side. There is a flag on the play. Yeah, we're probably we'll going to see a holding over there on that right side. Yes. Yeah, but it is, it is a holding on the offense, so it's first down again. Again, that's just kind of a beginning of the season mistake. These guys get a little aggressive out there, and especially that big number 77 from, from Miller. I'm sure Jeff Hardings right now is a little... Irritated. The offensive line has a lot of experience, lots of good seniors, good juniors and sophomores that just bring a lot to the table. So I'm, I'm sure he's a bit bit disappointed about the guys getting that call, but uh, they're going to get right back at out there and stop another play and try to get it done. I think we got to fix uh, someone's helmet over here on Miller, the safety. Looks like he's strapped back on. Three receivers outside. Rakes takes the snap. Lots of pressure. He throws it off to the wide receiver on the side. We're going to try to get his number here. Rakes pass to Amsbaugh is complete. Tackle by number 50, Landon Evans. Yeah, another pass to Amsbaugh. He, he just took that long pass there. Was able to get <laughs> Rakes out of that bad situation there because that would have been a huge put back, maybe eight, ten yards mm. if you would have got sacked there. Yeah, and it's nice to see they're spreading the love around a little bit here, too. They've you know got a good running game, and I think that's a second receiver now that's gotten some nice yardage out of the, out of the pass plays. We'll take the snap, run forward with the ball. and have a minimal gain. Anderson on the carry, tackled by Cox. Yeah, I know WC likes to do the pulling guard on that and try and open up them holes. But right now, Miller's showing some pretty good defense on that interior line. They're just not getting as many yards on the off tackles as we're used to seeing from last week at Grove City Christian. Rakes in the back. Anderson to his left. Three receivers yeah, trip, wide left. Trips left here. We'll see what we got going on. Probably another pass play. Receivers. Rakes throws to look like Amsbog again, but not able to come up with a little shallow pass. Wasn't able to get there. Yeah, he's going to wish he had had that one over again with a couple other guys pretty wide open there, but you get back in that pocket and you only got to second or two to think about where you're going to be throwing it to. And he went to the guy that had called it the last couple times. So, For sure. When you see your guy, you take a chance, you go for him. Reynolds is going to come off the field here, and the Warriors will attempt a field goal. Well, we were going to have a 32-yard attempt, but looks like someone may be off sides on the... On the snap, yep, they were offside, yes. Miller. So we're going to move it up five yards, give him a 27-yard field goal. Be a bit easier kick for Grant Woodfin. Oh, 
Well, actually, with the foul, the Warriors will stay on the field, and Rakes will try to put another six on the board here. They'll take the snap, run forward, and it appears that they will take up minimal yardage on that play. And this does not look good with Anderson. Uh, he took a pretty good shot there. He's still down on the field right now. Yes, the trainer's Hopefully, going out onto the field. Yeah. Hopefully it's just a little bruise from the way he got hit, but um, we'll, we'll see what happens here. Thing with this new turf, I think these guys just aren't, aren't used to how it keeps a hold of your cleats when you're running like that, and unfortunately this is one of the consequences with new turf. Yes, and it, does, it makes you a more stable platform, too. So as an opponent and just as a player, you can you get a really good grounding and it has put a lot more force into your blocks, into your tackles. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that doesn't end up well for the receiving end. Well, so far at this point, the Warriors have proven to be very aggressive on offense. Rex has done a tremendous job, especially as freshman. He has a great feel for the game. He's throwing excellent. He had one or two passes, came up incomplete, bit shallow. But overall, he's thrown to the right guys, mm -hmm. and he's clearly in the right, in the right mental mindset for this game. Both of the teams are taking a knee for Braden Anderson, the Warrior running back. There's 2 minutes, 32 seconds on the clock for the first quarter of play. Don't even want to try and speculate right now what, what could be wrong. It's hard to tell from all the way here across the field what they're looking at a knee or an ankle. Uh, we just hope it's something that uh, is not real serious. And yeah, Right now you can only hope it's just a minimal injury, especially having your, your senior running back. You want to keep them healthy, keep them safe. So hopefully it's only a mi minor scratch, able to get up, walk it off. We'll see how this turns out. It looks like they're bringing potentially a little cast out. And it also looks like the doctor has taken his helmet, put it on the sideline. Head coach right there, as you see, running out. It's Jeff Hardings going out to inspect things. Some of the players on the Warriors sideline are, are praying for their fellow fellow teammate.
some of the players are getting up to spread out as their coach comes along, make sure that they keep their distance, comply with the OSHA guidelines set forth. We're over here in the WC stands set up and nice little turnout over there for folks from Miller that came up all the way here from, I guess, south of New Lexington. We got a nice crowd over here to our left on the hill. For those that uh, couldn't get in the stands tonight, we were very limited on number of tickets, so they were able to social distance on the hill and watch from over there. Absolutely. It's great to see those people come out show their support for the team and still be able to, you know, get a glimpse at the game, even given the the restrictive seating uh, arrangements we have here, they can still come out, observe mm -hmm. from the fence, be able to, to support their team. It's still unclear what the yeah, condition of Anderson speculate. is. We'll just, uh, yes. Pray for the best here for this young young man, a senior. Absolutely. We can only hope that it's a somewhat minor thing he's able to come off and uh, hopefully still play some of the game and still play some of the season. Players on the sidelines are doing their best to stay focused, stay loose, and um, mentally focused on the game, getting some hydration, and uh, hoping for the best for their teammate out there. Folks, in case you're just joining us, the, we're at Founders Field here. The uh, Warrior running back, number 32, Braden Anderson, is down. Number 30, excuse me. Braden Anderson is down on the field. We're waiting to see what his condition is. Yeah, he took a pretty pretty rough shot there to the, to the leg right on the knee area. And with this new turf, 
like you know we mentioned it a little bit earlier your your cleats get get caught in this turf and they hit you low and right on your knees and it just went the other way i'm going to say i don't want to speculate that it is a knee but um just obviously he went down pretty hard and he's he's still down he's been you know about seven minutes and they're opening up the gates at the uh end of the field here which is not a good sign either which means they're bringing squad or a car or something in to help get him off the field and um get him to the doctor to get looked at a little bit more so you, you just you just hate to see that especially any any time of the any time of the year but you know beginning of the season and so we just pray for the best for him that absolutely two minutes 30 seconds on the clock here we're still in the first quarter it's currently seven to zero the warriors are ahead and uh we only hope that anderson's all right yeah and we're, that is we're probably going to be several more minutes here you can hear the squad in the background as they're, as they're coming in so for those of you who are out there watching and listening please uh say a prayer for this young man right now Yeah, absolutely. I, I go to school with uh, Braden, and he's always a, a very bright guy. And uh, I hate to see him be in this sort of shape right now. So I, I only hope that they're able to help him out and get him back on his feet. There appears to be an ambulance pulling in to the parking lot as we speak. We'll be able to provide some additional medical guidance and assistance here. Yeah, like I said, with our with our limited uh, camera angles and everything here, it's hard to. We don't even want to speculate, but obviously, we know it's pretty serious. For those just joining us, we're here at Founders Field, and currently the Warrior running back, number 32, Braden Anderson, is down on the field. The paramedics are here. They're bringing out a stretcher to escort him off the field. It's 7-0. to zero. The Warriors are up 2 minutes, 32 seconds in the first quarter. 
I only hope that this is a somewhat minor thing and they're able to help him out and he can get back on his feet and hopefully play the rest of the season. Uh, it's terrible to see a, a excellent, excellent guy like Braden go down, especially on senior night. Worked one, very hard. One to, of the team leaders for sure. So Absolutely. So I hope he's all right. The paramedics are here. Thankfully, they'll be able to help him out and uh, get, get him in good shape and get him to where he needs to be so he can get the right help. Well, according to a couple of our spotters here in the stands, they uh, tell us it looks like it may be an elbow. So this whole time we were, I was thinking, well, with the new turf and knee or ankle, but um, you yeah, know maybe was, I obviously without the replay here, it's hard to hard to see it again too. But it maybe the way he went down on that, or hyperextended, or um, but that that's what we're hearing. It's it's an sounds like an elbow injury. I was wondering because way he was, you know, just kind of laying, you know, moving his legs around and stuff. No one was even yes, touching it, yes. touching his knees or his ankles. So I was, um, yeah, they're gonna get him on the stretcher here, and I just hate to see this happen. Braden has been a, a really, a, truly a steady player for the Warrior offense, really one of the workhorses for the team, and just an excellent running back in general. Paramedics are currently getting him on the stretcher right now. He was standing for a brief period of time there as they got him on. And uh, he appears to be lying down on the stretcher. They got him on. They're going to do their best to, to get him off and get him to the hospital. And the crowd gives him a nice cheer as they get him onto this wheelchair stretcher. Get him to some medical assistance. This is a very hard thing for the for the warrior team, for the warrior community, and for everyone right now. And it'll be a true test of uh, Worthington Christian's ability to to pull through adversity here after losing such a, a, a critical leader on the team and and a great person. But uh, I think they'll be able to do it, and Anderson will be able to get some quality help here. Hopefully, they'll get things sorted out. Get his get some medical attention to his elbow, and hopefully we'll see him playing in no time.
You can hear Zoke, Zach Hoheisel leading his teammates. Looks like they're... Looks like they're giving each team a little time to warm back up here. The yes. Miller Falcons are over here to our left, stretching out again, and the Warriors are heading over here to our right to do some sprints. And like I said, they've been they've been sitting here for a little bit too long to, you know, get those muscles tightened up. So give them some time to loosen up here so we can get back at it. Absolutely. And I'd like to point out that the excellent leadership by, by Zach Hoheisel with so many of the other great guys on the field. They had a great leader just go down, but they're, <clears throat> they're able to c carry on and... As you can see right now, they're out there. They're warming up. They're they're excited, trying to get back into it, and do the best they can to to make up for uh, losing Braden and hopefully win this game for him. And I'm pretty sure that's that's the mindset of these guys is how can we win this game for him? He took a an, an unlucky hit there, and that sucks. But they're going to try to do their best to come out here and play the best game they can for him, and win it for him, and ultimately win it for the Lord. And uh, hopefully. Braden and his family, they'll be have some comfort, some peace during this time, and he'll be out here playing ball very, very soon. Mm I'm not sure how much time they're giving him here to get warmed back up. I'm assuming it'll just be a couple minutes. Got the refs out here in the middle of the field, just waiting to line the ball back up. Um, and it looks like they're getting them all together here to get them back into back into game mode. Precisely. Get some light stretching in. Get the blood flowing, get the muscles loose, get ready to play some ball. Two minutes, 32 seconds on the clock. This is still the first quarter. The Warrior leads 7-0. to zero. We're playing under the lights. Beautiful evening. Temperature is still great. Little to no wind. A slight breeze. And uh, we should have a uh, Hopefully a, a a safe ball game for the remainder of the evening. It's pretty been a pretty good defensive battle so far tonight. Um, obviously WC up seven to zero had a had a real nice run and some nice pass plays too. But um, on this last series, Miller's been able to to hold them, and so now they Miller Falcons had the ball first down and ten. First and ten on the Falcons eight. Rakes in the back, or excuse me, will be Falcon Ball. My fault. They'll attempt to play, but will not gain any yardage, and they'll try again on second down. Now Miller's still trying to just run it right up the middle, um, using that big running back. The Falcons are going to throw to, oh, they nice. were looking for number two, Hunter Wellspring, but they're not going to be able to come up with that pass. The Warriors are going to shut that down and hold them at third down. Third down on the Falcons 12 yard line. Still have nine yards to go. They're in a pretty bad spot here. Uh, 
Uh, WC switching out a couple defensive players. Looked like putting in another cornerback, looking expecting a pass here with a third and long. Cox in the back takes the snap, runs forward. Yeah, they tried that quarterback draw, trying to go off Cox's running back experience. Like I said, the last couple years he's played running back. Had to move him up to quarterback this year because their uh, quarterback graduated last year. Blaine Cox carries the ball, tackled by number 70. But Chase the uh, Warriors didn't didn't fall for it, but still gave up a few yards, so it puts them in a punting situation now. Ethan Albert and Aaron Isel were deep to receive the punt there. They'll take that up around the 40-yard line. One minute, 10 seconds on the clock for the first quarter here. Yeah, it was smart of Isel to come up and grab that because if that would have just, if you let it go, let it go and just let it roll, that could have rolled for another 20 to 30 yards. So it was a smart play to come up and at least make that catch even though he knew he wasn't going to get many yards after the catch. Yeah, exactly. You want to stop the ball before, it, you know, every yard counts. And so stopping early, it's very helpful. Like we're going trips left, trips left. It's like Hakes, Hobie Rakes. Rakes in the back. He's going to throw to Jaden Reynolds. Reynolds is going to pick up some yardage along the sideline. Will be tackled around the 35. Looks like they put in Aaron Isol as uh, halfback next to Hobie. One minute on the clock. We're going with trips left, trips right on this one. Oh, he's going to hand it off to Ice. So he's going to run forward with it and get tackled for, I'm guessing, a gain of what, two yards, three yards? Not many. Yeah, it looks like you get about three yards on that gain. So it's going to make it about, about second, and, second and six. And that's probably going to be the last play of the first quarter. Looks like it. Kyle McClain. Well, it looks like they'll try to get one more play in. Rakes in the back, three receivers to his right. Isil on his right, right next to him. Will take the snap, a little low snap, but will throw the ball. And Reynolds is able to pick that off and go right in for a touchdown and, for well, the Warriors. I'm glad that they did try and get that play off. They ended up uh, scoring, but we got some whistles out here. Looking, I'm looking for the yellow flags. Yeah, I see two refs in the end zone discussing I just, some things. I I'm, see, oh, there's the flag. Oh, he dropped all the way right in the end there. zone. It, it, but they're still going to rule it a touchdown, it looks like. I guess it was an inadvertent flag, touchdown maybe. So it is another Reynolds. another touchdown. So yeah, glad they did get that playoff. Great great pass and a great, great touchdown there. So now we go for the extra point and hoping to make this 14-0. to Put, puts it right through the middle to make it 14 to 0. Warriors over the Miller Falcons, and that ends the quarter. Let's hear it once again for our Worthington Christian Warrior cheerleaders. Excellent way to come out first quarter. You had a pretty traumatic injury there, but the Warriors were able to come out focused. And as you said, Al, I mean, they had 10 seconds coming down to the line. They're like, nope, we want to do one more play. And Rakes is able to throw a bullet right to Reynolds and just run that straight in. Yeah, Miller's been kind of leaving that um, that, that deep route open like that. And obviously they, they saw that up in the press box, were able to take advantage of it. And what I liked, it was a, a good mix of the first quarter as far as running and passing. So we've had a, you know, they've been spreading it around. And even the, the receivers, I think we've had three different receivers catching the ball. So it's been a good good mix of the offense out here. 
The other thing I also appreciate is the Warriors have done an outstanding job of keeping up the running game and the passing game. Um, making, you know, having that dual threat, I think, has also been problematic for the Falcons because they're having to deal with both because they're, they're great at passing, they're great at running. And so it puts a lot of pressure on those defensive backs and those safeties to decide if, should I come in, try to stop the run, or should I hold back and wait because they may throw it because Rakes has been doing great, has a great arm, and has shown some great accuracy on the field. And the Falcons will get, they'll catch the kick, but he will drop it. He's able to pick it up. And he comes down around the 20-yard line, so he's able to pick up a little bit. But thankfully he got that up. It looked like it could have been quite tragic for him. That was good coverage on the Warriors on the kickoff there. The Warriors defense will get set up here with their... Warriors typically going with a 3-4 defense. They kind of lean on their linebacker, the sophomore linebacker. He's a talented middle linebacker out there. So. And their defensive line here is very strong. Players like Jeb Burford, Chase Foreman, seniors with lots of experience to bring here and a lot of muscle to throw at the Falcons here. Yeah, Falcons tried to run it up the middle. It's a nice, nice tackle there. Tackle by 64, Jeb Burford and number 70, Chase Foreman. Yeah, and like I said right there, Chase and Jeb getting those two tackles, uh, just providing tremendous leadership to the defensive line there. Those guys have a lot to bring to the table here, and those are the players that the Warriors are going to come to rely on a lot this season. Blayton Cox in the backfield. Two receivers to his left. He'll take the snap, hand it off to the running back. And number 32, Russell, Caleb Russell. Yeah, I think someone got away with a face mask there in the middle. But, uh, yeah, it looked like who, it. Who am I to say? I'm sitting all the way up here in the stand, so I can't really see, right? War is going to make a quick substitution here along with the Falcons. It's 10 minutes, 45 seconds, yeah. second quarter. 14-0, to the Warriors lead. I'm sure the Warriors are expecting pass here with a third and long. And once again, the Falcons are going to try to pick up some yardage here, but they're, they're having a pretty slow start this drive and not being able to get a lot of good running here. Well, momentum is everything, and when you, you know, you, just, you end up fourth and five, fourth and six, it just makes it tough to, to keep the momentum going. And so we're in punting situation again for Miller Falcons. A high snap, but Cox is able to get it, and a pretty, pretty shallow punt. Um, it looks like I would say it only went yeah. perhaps 15 yards. Yeah. So the Warriors are going to have excellent field position here. And I can only imagine how excited they are to already be in, in pretty deep into Falcon territory. And uh, I'm sure Rakes is going to take some, some good throws here as they try to get into the end zone. It's either that or they'll be throwing it or they may just run it to try and uh, take as much time off the clock as possible on this uh, that's true, too. This second quarter. Uh, right now, there's a little confusion between who's supposed to be out there. One of the guys finally grabbed his helmet off the sidelines and sprints out there. Yeah, Jax Hollis Hollister was sprinting out there. <laughs> trying to get an extra guy on the field, make sure they're in compliance. Rakes in the backfield. Three receivers, two to his right, one to his left. He'll take the snap, run straight forward through the line and get excellent yardage there. Almost to the first down. I don't believe he made it, though, but uh, he right there. No, it's about a nine-yard carry, but uh, again, the line is just really doing a great job out there, opening up the holes for these uh, for Rakes and the, uh, and the running backs as well. 
And again, they're just using that run to, to set up the pass. He keeps bringing that safety in from the Falcons and then they'll get those receivers open. Well, and like I mentioned, the defensive line, the offensive line are very strong. People like Jeb, Burford, Chase Foreman, Zach Eliza, lots of seniors there with a lot of muscle to make those gaps, make those plays. Riggs is going to throw to his left, and Reynolds is going to catch the ball. He has a little tough time getting some yardage there, but it, it looks like he is going to get that first down. Yeah, he definitely, uh, it was a, a great catch, but it was an even better job getting the yards after the play because that could have been a play for a loss, but he was able to elude that first tackle, and, get, and he knew where the marker was. He was able to get up there and get that first down for him and keep this drive going with 8.43 left in the second half. Falcons are going to take a timeout here. Fourteen to zero, the Warrior lead at eight minutes forty-three seconds in the second quarter here. It looks like we're taking a timeout here, so it'll be a good time if you want to go get some snacks if you're watching at home. Refill your drink and uh, just make it back here in about thirty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Get a drink, take a breather. And we're hoping to get our second camera hooked up, up up at the top of the press box. We literally just got this computer up and running with about 30 seconds before the game started. It was just one of those days. I had to switch out computer cards and uh, to get the switcher going, to get this thing broadcasting. But I know there's a lot of people that wanted to be able to see the streaming. Even, I'm sure, the fans from the Miller Miller Falcons who weren't able to make the trip up here knowing that they wouldn't be able to get a ticket to get in to see the game. It looks like we're back at it again. Rakes in the back. He motions for Reynolds, and Reynolds is going to jet sweep right across, and he'll be pushed out of bounds. Nice little pop out of bounds there. Makes him lose the ball, but of course it goes right out of bounds, so it's still Warrior possession. Quinn McCabe. Coach is, the coach is just trying to uh, mix something up a little bit there with that little shovel pass to the end around. Get some, get some, some nice yardage, but it looks like it's all coming back. thing with those kind of plays is, you know, the, said the lineman, when there's a lot of movement to, to one side or the other when they're pulling like that, it, you know, it's, it's easy for them to want to reach out and grab that defender because cause there's just so much movement going so fast that they want to tend to just grab a shirt and that's when they get that holding call and brings them back and it frustrating for the for the running back that gets all that yardage and back it comes. Jeb Burford at center. Rakes takes the snap here. Looks to throw to Reynolds and Reynolds is able to catch that. Yeah, he's hit immediately when he catches it and does a good job hanging on to the ball. That was a... Hobie Rakes pass complete to... And that'll make it a Warrior second down with uh, about almost 8 to 10 yards there yeah, on that catch. Puts him in much better field position right now. Yeah, it's a nice hit there by Blayton Cox playing corner. Once again, three receivers. Two to the left, one to the right. Kind of a low snap again. He's going to throw it deep to Reynolds, and he catches and he that in the And he goes up zone. in the air and grabs that. What a great catch. Well, we got a problem is we got another field. Another, I'm sorry, another flag on the field. They're going to be bringing. Now there was a flag on the field, but it was declined. Yeah, I believe it was. Touchdown is going to stand. And Reynolds is one of those guys that is very athletic. And so putting him at receiver is great because he's able to get in there and, you know, take those diving catches and just show off his athleticism and, and do what he needs to do to get the ball. And so a guy like Rakes with a good arm, give him the ball, 
make a good throw, and Reynolds is able to just go up there and, and catch that mm -hmm. and do what he needs That's to do to get the do, job just done. Just get the ball up there near him and let your athletes be able to basically climb the ladder and reach up and get that ball, and that's what he did. And, Precisely. You know, nice touchdown. And that'll be his second touchdown for tonight. The PAT attempt is good, and that'll make the Warrior lead 21-0. to zero. Seven minutes, 28 seconds in the second quarter. Sun's going down a little bit, so thankfully we've got the field lights on, brighten things up a little bit. And it turned out to be perfect football weather here in Worthington, Ohio tonight. Fans sitting out on the hill because they're we're only I don't know how many tickets we were allowed to have, but um, not enough for everybody to get in. So a few of them sitting out, sitting out on the hill. A few of the fans from uh, Miller making the trek up. Uh, yeah, and there's just, actually a good amount of fans out there too. Yeah. So. Well, I, just, I don't want to say there's a ton of fans because if Dewine is listening, I don't want to, uh, <laughs> you know. I don't think there's shut enough this, to get us in trouble. But, but yeah, up, absolutely. <laughs> what it is, is it, it's just nice to see the kids out here playing and having senior night tonight, and their seniors able to come out here and uh, play this season. So I know my my son's a helping coach tonight because he's a senior wide receiver at Otterbein University. They moved their season to the springtime. They're going to yes. start in March. Yes. So they're like, hey, since you're not really playing this fall, how about coming and helping out coaching a little bit? So he's out there on the sidelines coaching up, coaching up the wide receivers. And, of course, his younger brother is a freshman this year, so he gets to boss him around a little bit on the sidelines. <laughs> Absolutely, you can get some good, uh, good experience, good training, and uh, having a, especially a coach that's a, a young player. You have that player mindset still, pretty fresh in the mind. So that's great. So that was a uh, penalty against Miller Falcons on that touchdown. So we were able to kick off from the Falcons' 45-yard line. So he was able to put that kickoff right through the end zone. So it'll be. First down for the Falcons on their 20-yard line. Cox will bring his team out here for the Falcons and hope to get some momentum going down 21-0. Falcons ball will start on the 20. Warriors are starting to switch up the, some of the defensive personnel just a little bit, get some of the younger guys in there to get some action. Cox and Russell in the back. Cox looks to throw to number 19. He was trying to catch Tommy Mitchell on that slant route there, but he's not going to be able to do that. Yeah, it's a little, a little crowded over there, too. A couple Warriors right around him. And, um... He had some nice zip on the ball, but um, the I uh, said with the Warriors around him, he just wasn't able to reach out and, and pull that in. So it's nice coverage by the Warriors. The receivers are much closer to the quarterback, not as far outside. Cox is going to run far outside to. Oh, wow, nice. he's going to catch that. Excellent catch there by number five, Kylan McLean. Yeah, and Cox took that snap, immediately went, f rolled far out to the left. And McLean was right there, and a pretty high pass too, but McLean was able to jump up and get that ball yep. going yeah, the first down. Yeah, McLean, a 5'9", uh, junior, did a nice job reaching out there and pulling that pass in. Nathan Thompson, the center for the Falcons here. Cox hands the ball off to one of the, it looks like the tight end. Again, good good uh, defense by the interior line of the Warriors. Number 11, down to die kicked. Yeah, the Warriors have been able to put, it, <clears throat> put an immediate stop to much of the running game for the Falcons and just hold them at the line of scrimmage 
and uh, just keep him at bay there. Wellspring and McLean as receivers outside. Cox rolls back, takes a long shot all the way out to Wellspring, and Wellspring is able to catch that. I would say that was, oh my goodness, uh, perhaps 30, 40 yard play right there. Yeah, he was able to get behind the corner from WC, and boy, if you would have had just a little more on that ball, that would have been a touchdown, but he had to turn around and fall backwards to catch that, but still a nice pass, and looks like there was a flag on the play. So yeah, I think it may be coming back, back. Holding on the, the Falcons. So that takes a, little, takes a lot of wind out of that sail. That was a real nice play that they really needed to keep them back into this down 21 to nothing and have a nice play like that but it's coming back yeah the Falcons are for sure a little discouraged I'm guessing but they're going to do their best to get back out there and, ho and hopefully get another excellent long pass there as uh, the running game hasn't been working out too well Cox in the backfield Two receivers to his left. He's going to roll out right, looking for someone to throw to. He's going to throw to, oh, it looked like he was, yeah, he was trying to throw for to uh, Wellspring again. But uh, like like you said, out very crowded. I, I want to say there was two Warriors on Wellspring yeah, uh, on that yeah, pass. Yeah, Heisel did a nice job of jumping up, and I think he, I think he even got a hand on that ball. Broken up by Jaden Reynolds. And Heisel and Reynolds both in there breaking that pass up. I'll make it a third down and 22 yards to go until they can get another first down here. Five minutes, 43 seconds in the second quarter here. Falcons are going to break the huddle. Cox takes the snap, rolls out right, looks to pass, but he's going to keep it and run up the sideline. Makes an excellent run and gets tackled just short of the first down. Yeah, he's about by, three yards short of the yeah, first down. Yeah, it looks like three so yards. A nice run. They, like you said, they kind of dependent on his legs there, being the ex running back, now quarterback. And he did have a nice run, but just a few yards short. It's fourth and three. And it looks like the Falcons are going to go for it. Yeah, it's hard to hard to tell because Cox yeah. is also doing the punting too. Exactly. So I still might want to keep one guy back for the Warriors in case he does decide to decide to kick it. But I figured, hey, they may as well may as well go for it. Yeah. A little under five minutes in the second quarter. The Falcons are going to go for it on fourth and three. Oh, and that's what they got oh. what they wanted. They drew him off sides. Boy, that's a bad, mis tough mistake right there. Is it's uh, very when costly you, when, when, you're, when you're right over the ball and you're the one that jumps off sides. He's going to hear about that from Coach Hardings. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine for sure. Yeah, you, you can't. Those are costly mistakes, and I mean that it keeps the drive alive for sure now. And yeah, you just, you, you don't want that. I was, and Miller kind of had an idea. It's like, well, it's fourth and three. Let's go out and see if we can get an offside. It gives us five yards, automatic first down. Totally. Cox gets, gets the ball. A little play action Rolls pass. right. Yeah, absolutely. The Warriors are going to be on him. He's going to be able to get through, though. And I want to say he gets that first down. But we'll have to see here. I'm not sure if they're giving it to him a first down, but he got about probably about eight, nine yards yeah. out of that. But Warriors had a they did a good job there covering. They had both both the receivers out there. They were they were covered real well, so he didn't have a choice but to tuck that ball and run, but still got eight yards out of it, so they'll take all that they can get. Yeah, it looks like second down, two yards to go. Just Shy of the first down. Two receivers out left. 
Isol in the back playing safety. And a, Cox is just going to hand it off and to I don't know if he got the that running first back, down. but yeah. Depends on what kind of spot they give him. Yeah, some good forward momentum, and then the Warriors just pushed him right back. It looks like he's going to be about a fourth and in inches. Or yeah, it looks, looks like it. Or, third, I'm sorry, yeah, third, third, third down. Inch. Yeah. Third down. In That's where Warriors have got to watch out for a pass up the middle. There is a flag on the play. Yeah, I think there's probably a little bit too much movement on the line that may go yes. back five yards for the Falcons. Yep, false start. Now it's going to be third and, third and si six. Third and six. And talking about those costly mistakes, I mean, you went from a third and one situation to a third and six, which you, know, you, you don't want to do that. So hopefully the Falcons are able to pull themselves out of this. But that definitely puts them at a, a worse position than what they were at on third and one. Oh, they're gonna, <laughs> the Warriors are just gonna deny that first down, and push the Falcons right on back. That is a great team effort there by the Warriors defensive line. Cox on the carry, tackle by a host of Warriors. <laughs> tackle by a host of Warriors, the announcer says. Couldn't be, <clears throat> couldn't be more truthful there. Two minutes, 37 seconds on the clock. Still second quarter. 21-0. to zero. The Falcons are looking to uh, hopefully get a first down here. It's fourth and 12. And it looks like they're going to go for it. They frankly don't have much to lose. You got trips left. One receiver wide right. Yep. A high snap. Cox is able to get it. Throws long to, oh, and it's intercepted, I believe. Almost intercepted. Almost, but, yeah, uh, it was incomplete, I think. But almost picked off there by the Warrior defense. He almost got there. Cox hung that up there for everybody to, to run for it. And, uh, yeah, we were able to knock it down. I think Cox was trying to go to McLean. Broken up by Jaden Reynolds. But uh, once again, you know, Reynolds right there on the coverage. Two minutes on the clock. Looked like Rakes took the snap there and yeah, just about, went for it. Got about five yards out of it. I think, yeah. just, I think they are now just trying to run the clock down. With less than two one, minutes left here in the first the half. Carries the ball, tackled by number 62, Nathan Thompson. Yeah, okay, excuse me. Looks like Caden Laster's into the yeah, game. Yeah, Laster's in there at QB now. He's a sophomore quarterback for the Warriors. He's also a smaller guy, too. Being the backfield, they have uh, two receivers outright. They'll take the snap, and they'll hand it off and have a good run with it. It'll be third down and two yards to go. The Warriors line up pretty quickly here. Tackled by Blayton Cox. And Caleb Russell. Moving with a bit more tempo here. Laster is going to hand it off to, I want to say, Jaden Reynolds. And he's going to run that over to the sideline. He picks up the first down. They're going to 
Stop the clock, let them move the chains. That's a nice run. You Number get four, Jordan Gray on the carry. Tackled by Jordan Gray on the carry. And Tommy Mitchell. With all the Warrior jerseys and Falcons, it's sometimes hard to make out their numbers yeah. on the field there. 30 seconds on the clock as we come down to halftime here. Looks like we'll make it. Probably get one more play yeah, in here. Probably another play or so. The Warriors are going to quickly get uh, Rakes into the game, putting him at receiver f far left. And Laster is going to take the snap here. Looks to throw. And he's going to make a pass to... He's got a nice completion out there. Oh. He's going to get him out of bounds with one second left. Great throw there. And I won't... To Eisel. Yeah, Eisel there. Great throw. He did a nice job uh, when he caught that and get, getting out of bounds to stop the clock. I don't know if they're going to try for a field goal to get the points. Yeah, that's or go for it. Yeah, it looks like they're going to do that. Get the field goal here. Get Grant Woodfin's out board. there. One second on the clock here. Field goal attempt. Grant Woodfin. Laster is going to be the placeholder. And Grant is able to put that right through the uprights. Warriors 24, Falcons 0, that brings us to our halftime. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, that may have been the most exciting first half of football we've ever broadcast live here from Founders Field. <laughs> I think you're right, Al. And I want to say... But since this is our first one... Th this is our first one. So, for first one, not bad. 24 to 0, great first half. Mm -hmm. And the Warriors have proven to just be the dominant team on both offense and defense. Um, so they'll, I'm sure they'll keep that up as they go into halftime. Do a little discussion, see what they can do better. But uh, well, hopefully the gonna Just take a little, take yeah, a little break I here. Think, I think so. It's going to get a little loud. We'll be back here in about 10 minutes for the second half.
Yeah, you still got your tongue, right? Yeah, yeah. Got four minutes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
we got a second camera set up. We were having some bit of a bit of some uh, technical difficulties in the beginning. Um, so we had one camera set up that was pretty much running the show for us. But we got a second one up higher, and it seems to be working now. So we hope to make good use of that. Got a little, little under two minutes until we uh, start our third quarter here. As you can see, it looks like uh, two of the team captains, one from each team is out there. Number 76 is Zach Hoheisel for the Warriors. And number three, Blayton Cox, the quarterback for the Falcons. The refs take their position and the teams get ready to go out on to the field to start the third quarter. Should be an interesting time. 24 to zero, the Warriors currently lead and they've been pretty dominant in the first half. So it'll be interesting to see if the Falcons are able to come back and uh, get into the game, put some points on the board and show, give the Warriors a hard time. See if Miller's head coach, Sean Bartley, able to make some adjustments here at halftime to figure out how to stop the Warriors. Warriors really just need to, need to keep doing what they did in the first half. They could end up 48-0. to zero. We'll see what happens. Grant Woodfin will be the kicker. Warriors lined up and ready to go. And we'd like to welcome all the fans uh, up on the hillside watching from there, maybe watching the YouTube or face. T face Facebook streaming as well. I know some of the Miller Falcon fans down in Corning, Ohio watching. I think we even got some fans up in Wisconsin that have tuned into the game. That's great. That's great. Wellspring and Mitchell are deep to receive for the Falcons. Woodfin will take the kick here for the Warriors. And a great kick, nice and deep. And Wellspring is able to catch that and run right on through. Oh, a great run. Able to pick up, uh, I would say, about additional 20, 25 yeah, yards. Brought that out to it. about the 42-yard line. So that'll be a nice start for the Falcons here for the second half. That's probably some of the best field advantage they've had to start off with here So in this game. I think you're right. And find out we got some fans down in Charlotte, North Carolina, tuned in as well. So we're... Awesome, we're all over the place. Tackle made by number 16, <laughs> Adam Dunson. We may, we may be going global here before too long. Falcons coming out, Nathan Thompson, the center, puts the ball down. The Falcons are ready to play. Cox takes the snap, hands it off to the running back. And he'll drive forward for perhaps a, a yard or so, but the Warrior defense will immediately shut him down. And as I mentioned, the, the defensive line for the Warriors is very strong. And for Russell, I think it's been, it's been very hard for Russell to be able to run the ball effectively against this very strong, this very powerful defensive line the Warriors have. So we'll see how they're able to do here in the second half. Two receivers out left. Cox looks to take the snap. And it looks like he's looking to throw. He's going to scramble a little bit outside the pocket. And he'll be taken down. The Warriors will sack him. Nice way to defense to string that out. That was some good coverage on there, too, as he just had no place to throw it. Cox and McCary, tackled by number 45, Tyler White.
Both teams are going to make some quick substitutions here, get some fresh legs on the field, have a guy or two come off here and there. And the Falcons will break the huddle here and get ready to go. A little under 11 minutes in the third quarter here. 24 to 0, the Warriors lead. Three receivers wide. Cox will take the snap. He rolls out right, throws. Oh, to, almost uh, intercepted. Wellspring. But it'll be an incomplete pass. And the Warriors. Reynolds, Reynolds almost able to grab that, and that would have been a pick six. Exactly. Reynolds once again on it. I, I want to say maybe his third time he, he's been so close to having an interception. Mm -hmm. He's going to get one here before the night's over. Yeah, for sure. And he just has great pass coverage. And he's a, he's a great receiver too, so it works out well for yeah, him to play cornerback because he, he just clearly understands that position so well and, and is able to read the game excellently. So it's about fourth and about a half a mile here, so they're going to punt it again. And he gets the punt off. It's a pretty decent punt a little too. little confusion on who was going to get that one. Yeah, and uh, – Oh, and it's going to be well. Still, Warriors ball. I think they thought he was a, a kickoff or something because he kind of shoved the Warrior <laughs> punt returner out of the way so he could down the ball. Yes, no, he, he, he did, did. He did. I don't know if he may, didn't realize he could have just really let it roll, and they probably probably would have rolled right to the one yard line, but. They get a little anxious yeah. out there at times. No, it, I think you're right. It looked like there was a, a bit of a miscommunication between the two Warriors there, and they just let the ball roll, you know, another 20 yards down the field. Um, so definitely not going to put them in a good field position. But the Warriors will do their best to work with what they got here. Rakes is back into the game as quarterback, and he's going to hand it off. And uh, oh, they're going to—the Warriors are going to try to run the ball, but the Falcons get a quick tackle right there at the line of scrimmage. Linebackers came up, made a nice tackle on that. Ethan Albert on the carry, tackled by number 50, Landon Evans. I know the Warriors like to use this run to set up a pass and see if that's what they're see if that's what they're doing here now. Second and ten. Three receivers wide to the right of Rakes. They're gonna hand it off, try to run the ball here. But once again, those defensive backs are just gonna get in there and stop that run. Yeah, it looks like the uh, Miller Falcons have kind of sniffed that out pretty well here. Seeing those off-tackle plays, and the linemen, offensive linemen are just aren't getting the helmets on the defense right now to keep those guys out of the way. So, so now we got third and about 11, so I'm guessing we're going to see a few extra receivers in here. Probably have a rakes roll one way or the other and try and air it out and get, get these yards back. Just Rakes and Lassiter in the back. Two receivers right to the right. Rakes is going to throw the ball out to Reynolds. Going to try to get some yardage, and he's just going to get tangled up there on the sideline. Yeah, he may still be about four yards short of the first down. Not sure what kind of play that was where they had Rakes like he was going to run it and then turned and threw it sideways almost. and. I know they're probably just thinking, well, get it, get in another athlete's hand and get him up the field, but um, it just took too long to for the play to develop on that. And Miller Falcons, they were just all over it. I think this is the first time we've had to punt tonight. I think it might be fourth down and, and it looks three. like because they're kind of confused as far as who's supposed to be snapping it and where he's supposed yes. to snap it. Tell him just put the ball on the ground and shoot it back there to the guy in the back. Did a little bit of a oh, yeah. little bit of a rugby punt. Yeah, exactly. But he got Great some punt, nice though. height on that. Better get on it here before it rolls backwards anymore. Yeah, it's going to roll go. back there, probably about five, ten yards. Uh, sort of annoying, but 
that's saying with that kind of punt, you know, they call it a rugby punt where, where he takes a couple steps and they do get some nice height on it, but the thing is they don't get that spin like the like you see these yes, guys yes. get. So when it does hit, the tendency is it'll roll roll backwards. Where if you get it up and get that nice spiral tight spin when it hits, then it's going to take off down the field, and that's what gets you that extra 20, 30 yards on these punts. Eight minutes, 40 seconds. Falcons with the ball on their own 45-yard line. First down, 10. Cox looking to throw. Throws deep to Wellspring. And I think we're going to see a flag, but, but the yeah, ref can't find so. it. There he goes. He hadn't used it much tonight, and he's... Finally, yeah, there was some definite yeah. definite pass interference For on sure. there. You could see that coming. He, Three he was, warriors right there and just sort of tripped him up. Well, he was covered he was covered really well. The pass was thrown too long. They didn't really need to do that. Um, yeah, and like I said, they just kind of got tripped up back there. It was one of those unfortunate because that's going to give him a definite first down and some nice yardage here to get him into WC territory. This, I think it's the first time that the Falcons have been in warrior territory tonight, though. I think it would be yeah the first or second. Maybe clearly early, they haven't been in early in the game. They they did get in. There, yeah, so. clearly they haven't been here very much though. So this is this is progress for them. It's, it's been a while since they've seen this little bit of real estate between them and the end zone. Two receivers out wide on each side. Cox takes a snap, but they hand it off and run straight, trying to break through the defensive line. They'll come up with about a yard and a half ish. Yeah, well, Falcons like to uh, run up behind that big uh, offensive lineman, number 77, Chase Davis. But it's still about second and eight. So they got two receivers right, two receivers left. Cox has his running back to his left side. And it's rolling out to his left, oh, and now he's got to head right back on right him. in. Oh, oh it's and gonna that's going to be a fumble. fumble. Let's, go! Let's go! Let's go, and I believe it's Zach Hoheisel, 76, running it back. Yes! Touchdown, Warriors. Yes! And no flags on the field. Awesome display of the Warrior defense there. How about that? You know, big lineman gets to run that all the way back for the score. You could tell the, uh, tell Jeff. You tell uh, now Jeff Harding's is happy. He's had him doing those sprints all summer. <laughs> he, he made that down there in about a four four forty, wasn't it? <laughs> I would say that was that was pretty fast. <laughs> Zach did a great job getting that down there. He was, running, it's he was running downhill the whole way. Absolutely. <laughs> it's always a great day when. A lineman is able to get a touchdown. I always love to see that. He's going to want that game ball, but I don't think they'll give it to him. Not with not with the COVID anymore. <laughs> Grant Woodfin will make the <coughs> extra point here, and that'll put the Warriors at a thirty-one nothing lead. So we're going to have a running clock, according to the uh, field announcer. I guess it's when it's over 30 point lead and they just had the running clock. So you won't get to listen to us as much since the uh, running clock going on, but I don't know if that's a good thing. Hey, we got three likes, two likes on our YouTube channel. It's guess, probably that's better that there's a running clock because one of the best benefits is you just don't have to listen to us. Yeah. So that's probably my, my mom and dad have liked uh, the YouTube <laughs> so far. I don't know. Maybe your parents did. There you go. Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. Seven minutes, 34 seconds in the third quarter here. The Warrior kickoff team is going to kick, uh, take the field here. Excuse me. Grant Woodfin kicking off for the Warriors. Back to receive for the Falcons. Number two, Hunter Wellsburg. And you're going you're gonna to miss us next week because uh, the Warriors are actually playing next Thursday night, and it's going to be live on CW. So they're giving us a week off. Allows us to take a break. 
<clears throat> do some technical upgrades, work some things out, get ready for the week after. Woodfin with an excellent kick there. Nice kick all the way down to the three-yard line. For sure, and it looks like I think that's Wellspring. It's going to do a decent job running that back. It's going to yeah. get almost to the 30-yard line. Yeah, it's like we got another, another warrior down. It may have just uh, either got the wind knocked out of him or he's making his way back up, number, yes, 45. number 45. Tyler White, but he'll, he'll get up and walk that off. Yeah, it's Tackled by number 25, Daxon Zertman and Aaron Eisel. Yeah, Whirlpool, Whirlpool will feel, feel good to him tomorrow morning. Yeah, probably going to start seeing some Personnel changes here for the Warriors, getting some of the other some of the other guys out there. So you probably see a lot of running on and off the field, and then even once they get out there, other guys telling them where to go. It looks like one of them called a timeout here. That may be a Miller Falcons timeout. I think so. And it'll be critical for the Warriors to, like you said, get some younger guys into the game and get them some experience maybe get the ball in their hands and be able to try some new things out too. It's only the second game of the season with uh, some somewhat younger <clears throat> players like Hobie Rakes, Caden Lasseter, be able to try some new things out and just get some experience to build up the team, build up the cohesion and just the team camaraderie. Well, there's only four seniors on the Warriors this year, so yes. it's probably one of the shortest senior night celebrations we've had here in a while but um but four good four good leaders on the team but that just means there's a lot of juniors sophomores even freshmen playing out here so it's you know good to get them all some playing time yeah and looking forward this warrior team will only get stronger really as they as these younger classmen move up, gain some experience. So uh, in part, this season sort of a developing season, but also they have some, some great young talent coming their way. All right, now we got to have one of the coaches count, make sure they got 11 guys out there. They've had a lot of running back and forth here. Cox takes the snap. They're going to hand it off and run with the ball. They come out of the gate pretty fast. Warriors are pushing back, but it, it looks like they got at least f over f five yards, I would think. And made less than that. Looks like he's marking it maybe. Yeah, I think you're right. Maybe about four yards. But the thing is now Warriors got a lot of got a fresh legs out there too. Um, so they're all even even younger guys able to s stretch that play out, get to the ball, do do a nice gang tackle. Cox takes the snap. He rolls right. He's going to pitch it to. Uh, There's a nice read there by the defense. The, yeah. to, they did. They did it just just the way you're supposed to do it. One guy on the quarterback, and the others just keeping an eye on the the running back, knowing he's going to. One of them's going to. One of them's going to run it. So. We have so he st he st stayed home and stayed on that quarterback, and then gave the other guys the opportunity to bring the bring the running back down when he did pitch it. A nice defensive play with those young guys. Staying with that 3-4 defense, it gives them the opportunity to, to stretch this offense out like that when you got that many linebackers and corners out there. One safety deep. And the Warriors are going to quickly break up that run there too and yep. just... 
kind of put the Falcons kind of, you know, at a, just sort of a stalemate here. Yeah, they kept them on their heels, and like I said, they're just just not able to open up any holes for the for the running back, for the Falcons running back to, to get anywhere. And so now they're back into another punting situation. Cox will be back to punt it again. Two Warriors deep for the return. Well, you got a nice punt there. That is a great punt. The Warriors will feel that one and just run that one out of bounds there. Yeah, about six yards on the return for Eisel. Four minutes, 39 seconds in the third quarter here. 31 to zero. Now it looks like the Warriors aren't going to take their foot off the gas right now. They're coming out here with trips left. Race takes the snap, throws to Jaden Reynolds. He makes the catch. And I would say about yeah, about four yards. Yeah, maybe got maybe got about four yards on that. As soon as he caught it, he had someone yeah. wrapped around his ankles, so he didn't have a chance to get any more yards out of that. Yeah, the Falcons were, were right on him. Good coverage there. As soon as he caught it, they had a guy right there to take him down. Well, looks like they're just going to keep the momentum going and keep the passing game going here. Coming out here with trips left again. Oh, and <laughs> the Warriors were going to run that there, but Rakes was, as soon as he got up to the line there, the Falcons were just right there to just yeah, stop it. Yeah, Falcons weren't having none of that tonight. All in all, it's been an excellent night for the young freshman, Hobie Rakes. He's done very well at uh, throwing the ball and had some uh, pretty good throws too, especially to Jaden Reynolds. Mm -hmm. Two touchdown passes and two, two very uh, exciting touchdown passes to add to that. Yeah, switching it up a little bit here. Two receivers left, one receiver wide right. Oh, very low snap. And the ball's going to drop gonna to be the ground. Um, and uh, they're giving that to Miller. Yeah, it'll be a turnover. Jimmy Miller's ball on their own 40-yard line. First turnover, well, is it first turnover tonight yes. by the Warriors? And, uh, yeah, just didn't get that snap up high enough. Yeah, low snap. Left it down there on the carpet, and Falcons recovered it. Two minutes, 38 seconds in the third quarter here. The Warrior defense comes out. Now this would be a, a great time for the Falcons to capitalize on this opportunity here and uh, hopefully get that ball downfield in the end zone. One receiver wide. Another one. Cox takes. There you go. Me. Nice yeah. tackle. Just gets shut down right there. Mitchell on the carry, tackled by Caden Lassiter. Lassiter stepping up and making a nice tackle for a loss, about a half a yard loss on that. And Caden Lassiter is another one of those very athletic kids. Oh yeah, yeah he just has a just very, very well built, and just has a good read of the game. Right. And you just put him in, and he, he can make those plays, and just goes goes with the flow. He has a good football IQ. His dad's actually the uh, middle school football coach here, so he's grown up around this, and you can tell. Another good job by the. Warriors defense interior line holding them to just a few yards. It's going to make it third and long. 
I have to tell you, the, one of the things that they're doing this year, I guess because of the COVID, the, the center, center takes the ball back with them to the huddle. They don't leave it out on the line of scrimmage. Yes. So it kind of throws me off first couple times I see the center just kind of walking away with the ball. No, it is and different. And he, he brings it back up, and uh, they show him where to set it down. And Yes. Well, I'm under the impression of they bring the ball there. You might, If you're the defense, you can kind of sneak up and uh, <laughs> maybe get in the huddle with them, hear what's going on a little bit. 40 seconds on the clock here. The Falcons are going to hand the ball off to their running back. And Russell's not – well, he's, he's, he's going to break he's through a little bit, actually. He's close, but he's still about a yard, yes. yard, maybe half a yard short. So I'm guessing they're probably going to go – may as well go for it. Might as well. 25 seconds on the clock as we uh, come down to the end of the third quarter here. Probably do an off, off tackle up there behind the Falcons – Number 77, Chase Davis. At TV. actually, he's over now at a uh, left left tackle. And oh. one of the Falcons, <laughs> very obvious. One of the Falcons thought there. he was playing arena football. Thought he'd just take <laughs> off running and get a little head start. But sorry, son, we're still in high school. Can't be doing that. Maybe in a couple of years when you're playing for the Columbus Destroyers in the Arena League. <laughs> Maybe then. That'll be the end of the third quarter here. Warriors will, and the Falcons will take a bit of a breather here. Get some hydration and uh, get ready to get back get, on the field. Get and, ready uh, for 12 of the most exciting football minutes of your life, ladies and gentlemen. We wrap up the fourth quarter here at Worthington Christian. Well, it'll be fourth and two, and it looks like they're going to go for it. And uh, they, they really don't have anything to lose here. They might as well. So and there's yeah. a very good chance they can pull this off. Except they forgot they gotta yeah, switch, got to uh, switch, the <laughs> switch, switch yeah. sides of the field. Nice job on the ref's part, keeping this game under control, making sure they run in the right direction. That's what they're paying the big bucks for with those OSHA refs to make sure we go in the right direction, keep the clock running. Keep things on schedule for sure. <laughs> Fourth and eight, Cox with the ball, rolls out right. He'll run up the sideline. Oh, that's going to be and close. And it'll be but, close. Uh, not, I, I guess it's not, no, not it. even close. He's, he's out about four yards short of the first down. And the Warriors center comes out with his ball. This is our turn to take over now on offense. Yeah, it's about that time of the game where we're doing, like I said, the personnel changes, and so some of the guys still on the sidelines with their helmets off, and. They'll come running in just in time to set up, and now we're calling a timeout yeah, time here. Yeah, timeout. We're timeout so, here. Yeah, some of these guys that you know aren't used to going in, and all of a sudden they hear their name, and they're like, "Wait a second, I, my helmet's down at the other side of the field. I got to grab that before I can get out there." No, absolutely, and, and it helps build up the, the the confidence to go out there and play, and, and the experience to. To get them ready for when they're upperclassmen and, and their, you know, their team needs them to go out and play much more consistently, and of course it just gets you a lot of practice with not getting those penalties of, you know, having an extra man on the field, mm -hmm. having uh, one man shy uh, of not being on the field, um, and you know just kind of gets them set up for those types of technicalities and making sure you know they're 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 organized and they're working in that cohesive way uh, 
Yeah, coach is lining up some of the younger guys over here on the sidelines, getting them, getting them ready to see some action. And meanwhile, we're going to go twins to the right. And it looks like Lasseter back, quarterback with. Do you have a high snap there, but they're able to get it off. And uh, Haney gets up the field. Make a and good run with it. Close to the first down. Yeah, he did get the first down. Yeah. Had about 11 yards on that carry. Excellent run there by Jordan Gray. First and 10. 10 minutes, 20 seconds on the clock here. That's a nice run there for Jordan Gray. Get, got that out there around the end, and like I said, got up there, got 11 yards for that first down. Three receivers out to the left. And we're going like to have a false oh, yeah. start here. That's the thing, you guys get out there, they get anxious, they want to get down the field and get open, hope to get a pass to them and false start, boys. jump before the ball snapped. Yeah, a couple, a couple full, false starts by the Warriors th tonight, and um, I'm sure Coach Jeff Harding's. Yeah, they'll be doing some push-ups for that on Monday's <laughs> practice. Absolutely, a couple tire flips here and there, and uh, that'll that'll solve that problem for good. Got trips left again, so it looks like they're not taking the foot off the gas here. Going to throw it again. Oh, good blitz there, but the Warriors are able and to get that off to uh, out to Reynolds. Yeah, off to Reynolds He's again. Got about nine yards on that catch. Cody Rake's pass complete to Jaden Reynolds. And tackle by Kyla McClain. Rakes has been a, a really a tremendous, consistent player for the Warriors tonight. I'm throwing great passes, good balls, and the receivers have done an, an excellent job of being in the right place and being able to, you know, t take a leap, take the dive, make the jump to uh, get that ball. And that's really been very useful for the Warriors here as the Falcons have struggled to do that. Gray just ran in for Lassiter. And oh, they, and they yeah. tried the old the old cross buck, and Miller wasn't having any any of that. Miller Falcons read that, and yeah, pretty much just all crammed down the middle there, and just Ethan made it crowded. Rake's looking to the sideline to get some. Uh, Get a play call from the coaches. Warriors are going to put some fresh legs on. Yeah, I'm sure the coach is like, oh, whatever we do, don't call that last play again. <laughs> <laughs> Find something different. Warriors put three receivers out wide, one left, two right. Riggs takes the snap, looks to throw. Throws to, uh, looks, yeah, he was trying to go for Reynolds, but it's sort of a shallow pass. And uh, the... Uh, <coughs> Falcons there helped pick up Reynolds. Good, great sportsmanship on this play right there. And uh, <laughs> great, great, just great sportsmanship on this play right there. And Warriors coming out to punt again for the second time tonight. Yeah, the, the Falcons have done an, an excellent job <coughs> in, in the f end of the third quarter, beginning of the fourth quarter here of, uh, you know, halting, slowing down. Mm -hmm. Warrior offense. Yeah, they took the they took the Warriors' momentum away for sure, and let's see how we get this punt off. I'm curious if he does this uh, rugby style punt again. The Warriors having some issues with their personnel. Just stand in one spot there, young man. There you go. Not a bad punt. He's able to get that one off, and uh, they're going to come down on it around the 19 yard line. Six minutes, 20 seconds on the clock. I'm sure the zero. Falcons are just hoping they get some points on the board here. They got a 
by 81 yards to go in order to do that. Yeah, they have quite a drive ahead of them. But um, they've been able to pretty effectively slow down the Warrior offense. They did have so a couple hopefully. nice long passes they earlier did, in the game, but the penalties brought them back. The penalties did, and they, they tried to run the ball a little bit, and that didn't work out very well for them. So we'll see what they do here. Yeah, they're set up with a pass offense with yeah. two wide receivers. Left man in motion, and another false start. Another false start. Falcons. That will not be helpful. That'll push him back further to their end zone. And I'll put him in some pretty tight territory. Those are the kind of penalties that just drive a coach nuts when they're, <laughs> they're already deep in their own territory. And it's like one of those players are like, son, just look over at the ball, wait for the ball to move, and then take off. Especially when you're out there in the receiver, it's hard to hear the quarterback do the cadence anyway, so you, you're supposed to just look down the line, look for the ball. As soon as you see the ball move, then you know you can take off. Cox gets the snap, immediately hands it off to Russell. Yeah, he, he may get a few yards out yeah, of it. Yeah. Still not back not to much. the original line of scrimmage. It's going to be about second and 13. Tommy Mitchell on the carry, and... Andrew Myhall, number 55 on the tackle. Okay, another another freshman, Andrew Myhall for the Warriors, making a nice stop there. Yeah, it's about time for the Falcons to start airing some things out here. Need to, they need one of those long passes like they had earlier in the game. These little 40-yard runs are not not going to be able to cut it right now. They have two receivers out wide. And, uh, oh, yeah, they're going to run it again. Yeah. Looked like the tight end came over the quarterback and took yeah, the ball there. Yeah, did a little there. man in motion and handed it off to him. Yeah. And then he cut back into the crowd. The sort of the same play there like last time. They motioned that guy Tackle in mm -hmm. try to get him, but it's just, yeah. didn't, it's just and not And Warriors out. defense just doing a good job staying at home. Yes, and, yes. Uh, not getting fooled by that. And um, like I said, he, when he comes back around, he just runs right into the Warrior crowd. Four minutes on the clock, third and ten. I said it's a running clock now Falcons. due to OSHA rules, so things, yes. will, things will go pretty quick here with three and a half minutes left. Falcons on their own 19 here, third and ten. Two receivers out right. Cox is going to motion a, a man out. He's going to run out. To the left, and the Warriors and are just nice, going to bring him down. Nice tackle. The Warriors' defense, they strung him out. He really had no place to go on that. Brings up a fourth and long. Caleb Russell on the carry. Tackled by Elijah O and Corral Amsball. Man, I'm thinking of, thinking this next offensive series, we're going to see a lot of the younger Warriors coming out here, getting a chance to play in their first home game on this new turf. New stadium turf. First home game. Yeah, no, absolutely. Two minutes, 47 seconds on the clock here. Falcons yeah. look to punt. Yeah, they needed a few more men on the field to get this punt off. Yeah, they're going to bring on number 77, Chase Davis. Not a bad punt. Warriors are going yeah, to so signal fair, fair catch, catch by Eisel out there to give the Warriors the ball on the on their own 48-yard line. Warriors getting some instructions from the coaching staff. Looks like Caden Lasseter is going to act as QB here. Take, the taking, over the, taking over the QB spot. And uh, three, 
Three men in the back. Lannister looking to take the snap. One receiver out wide. They're going to hand it off. And uh, they're yeah, not going to come yeah. up very far with it. Yeah, Miller's Falcons has had some nice penetration on that with their defense and able to trip them up in the backfield. Jackson Zartman on the carry. Tackle by Caleb Russell. Yeah, Zartman got tripped up there almost right as he crossed the line of scrimmage by the Falcons. And uh, just good, good defensive read there by the Falcons. Two receivers out wide on the right. Laster takes the snap, hands it off again. And uh, Zartman gets he, a bit farther this time. But, but still about, about to the original line yeah. of scrimmage now. So they're at these, uh, just giving these younger guys a chance to get out there and use those new helmets. One minute left in the game here. Lasseter running over they may get to the two, huddle. May get two plays off, maybe just one here it's with this 39. running clock. So they're going to try to yeah try to get a playoff here, maybe a second one if they can. Three receivers to the right. Lassiter with Zartman right next to him. Lassiter takes the ball, decides to run himself. He's able to find a hole and makes it. Uh, I'd say about five yards through. Yeah, again about fourth and fourth and four on this. And that's going to be the. That's probably going to be the end of it, though, ladies probably. and gentlemen. Thanks for. Uh, yeah, fifteen oh, seconds. Oh no, we here. called a timeout, so we're going to get one more play in here. They're looking to make. Sit uh, back down, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we still got one more play to go. <laughs> Don't turn that television set off yet. All in all, great first night for the Warriors. Oh, yeah. Excellent weather. Great field turf. And uh, just a good old-fashioned football here at Founders Field. Crowd still out there on the hill. They may Absolutely. Be, Very they, uh, faithful. They're probably going to probably start a bonfire here in a few minutes <laughs> and just take this right into the evening. I know if I do this job again, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to have to get a pizza sponsor. I may call Massey's Pizza and see if they'll bring some pizzas in here while I while I do this. I'm, it gets to be a long night. It, it helps <laughs> when you're not on camera, too. Got to get that Massey's Cauliflower Pizza in here. Ref will signal to start the clock. Uh, and there's a they'll have uh, three guys in the backfield with uh, looks like two receivers out left. Uh, Christian Tucker out there at the top of the top of the screen right now. He's anxious to get a ball thrown to him, but they're going to hand it off. And oh, and they're just going to break through. And uh, <laughs> looked like they were almost trying to go for a touchdown there. Yeah, well, of just, course, just spread yeah, through. Of course you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, good job, Dave. It was nice. They've been nice uh, doing this with you here tonight. Hope the folks out there were able to watch their watch their family. And, Friends play out here tonight. I'm glad we were able to get the equipment going. Watching the Warriors versus the Miller Falcons. Like I said, next Thursday, they're playing next Thursday night. The Warriors are home again, but they'll be broadcast on CW. Um, I doubt it'll be as good as coverage as we gave tonight. Yeah, I think you're right. I, I think uh, it'll probably be of a but <laughs> tune in, good quality, but just tune in nonetheless. Yeah, not as good commentary for sure, <laughs> but uh, it's still <laughs> excellent football, and uh, we look forward to that game, and we, we hope that uh, both teams have a great rest of their season. They're able to continue right. playing, yeah. and that uh, Braden Anderson is able to get healed up a little bit, get right back in. So I think they're ready to ready to cut us off here. So thanks for your patience yeah. tonight, folks. Hopefully the next, uh, like I said, next Thursday at CW, the next home game. Hopefully we can do this again. And um, thank you for tuning in. We appreciate it. Hopefully you enjoyed the coverage of tonight's game. And uh, thank you for tuning in. We appreciate it a lot. And, and uh, we look forward to doing this in the future. And from what I understand, the uh, the injury there to Anderson, I overheard the dad talking a little bit. Um, hopefully it's just maybe just like a dislocated elbow, which is yes, so very yes. painful. But um, remember to keep him in your keep him and his family in your prayers as well. Thanks again for tuning in.